Okay, thank you. Let's get then started. My name is Olpe Kobutanen and I'm uh, currently the head of the research group called Software Business Lab in Alto and, and also uh, pretty much involved with this uh, entrepreneurial teaching and, and education in this AVP program. But today uh, our theme is, is based on the ICT Plus project that uh, Alto Pro uh, conducted or, or actually uh, coordinated last January. We had the press uh, press event about uh, this how to how to uh, create thousands of new ICT based jobs in, in the capital area of Helsinki and and uh, the order of this this project was. Uh, so-called Elykeskus, who knows what Elykeskus is in English. I know because I checked the Center for Economic uh, Development, Transportation and Environment. Great name. And, and our task was, was uh, to find out what's the status of the, the uh, structural change in, in ICT domain going on in, in capital area, in, in Finland and, and, and how to overcome those challenges and implications of the change and, and, and what we would uh, propose <coughs> that should be done in this context. So uh, what we found out, uh, we made some, some review and found out that the Nokia cluster has lost uh, about 40,000 ICT jobs in a few years, or 40,000 jobs in a few years in, in Finland and most of those ICT uh, related. But in the meanwhile, small growing companies and, and clo uh, international entrants have been hired on, on this our market. And, and we also found out that about half of the ICT workforce in, in, in Finland is located in the Uusima province and, and, and most of that in the in, in, uh, capital area. And that means that we have about uh, 4,000 ICT firms in this area, concentrated in this small area. And, and about 50% of those firms are, are related to computer uh, software and related services. And about 60% of those firms are service-based firms. So uh, we all know that, that this our, our labor market is, is doing not very good and, and uh, it, it has been weakened uh, during the last uh, year and, and Usima is not an, not any exception in this whole context of, in this context of whole, whole Finland regarding this. So what we started to do, we started to find out so what's the economic significance of a startup and growth centers in the global level. And we all know that there are many different uh, startup ecosystems, well-known startup ecosystems in the world. And one of those is, is uh, all, the, uh, all the others, and that is Silicon Valley. So regarding almost any possible index measuring, measuring the success of these kind of ecosystems, Silicon Valley is number one year after the other. And, and uh, the economical implications are, are, are extremely big. So, so uh, during the last three decades in the USA, so, so almost all the value created uh, is, is economical value created are based on these fast growing technology based uh, companies, mostly IT, IT sector companies. And, and uh, all the jobs created, we are talking about net job growth, is based on companies which are under five years old. So that's a structure in, and, and, and uh, circumstances in USA. And, and, and if, we, if we think about the role of talent in this kind of ecosystem, so, so uh, solely on, on, uh, related to Stanford, uh, Stanford alumni companies, they have generated uh, almost three trillion US dollar revenue annually and, and, and over four million new jobs since the inception of, of Silicon Valley. So, if this is the success case that, that, that uh, we had as a, start, a kind of starting point.
Then we uh, started to think about uh, and, and find out how Silicon Valley was actually born. And, and Paul Graham, he is a doctor from Harvard. Uh, he's a well-known uh, VC and, and, and one of the founders of Yahoo. Uh, he has been uh, thinking and, and, and speaking about this topic in his uh, keynotes and, 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 and writing in his blogs quite a much. And, and he thinks that, that actually, actually uh, Silicon Valley was born when, when uh, right type of talent that time, that means IT talent called nerds is really using that term. And, and, and wealthy people, rich people met in favorable circumstances. And what were those favorable circumstances in addition to these, these uh, type of resources? Well, you got to have a metropole, uh, big city nearby for those people, employees. To, to uh, go around, you have to have facilities, spaces to meet up, to get these different uh, talents and, and different ingredients uh, mixed. And, and of course, we, we cannot neglect uh, the role of climate also, also that's very favorable in, in that area. But, but uh, the success story started to emerge when those Fast growing companies, first HP, after that Apple, and, 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 and the latest uh, ones Google, were born in this area. But they stayed also in that area, fostering and catalyzing this, this uh, very fast growth of this uh, area where, where the concentration of this talent and, and, and resources and possibilities was met. So we know that, that IT, IT uh, competence and IT skills and IT, uh, ICT-based labor is not enough today. We need a lot of other, other competencies and, 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 and many different resources uh, around. And then we need to have this uh, university around and, 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 and this, this metropole, metropole uh, nearby. So, so that's, a, that's a quite a typical setting for our growth and, and, and innovation uh, ecosystem. So, let's get back to this our topic. Uh, when we further investigated this domain, we found out that, that uh, about 75% of, of, uh, of Finland's ICT-based companies are these uh, software uh, or software-related service companies, so-called uh, SIG uh, 62 and uh, 62 uh, class, class company, companies. And, 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 and when we look at this trend of, of uh, ICT manufacturing, uh, we can see here the decline since year 2000 in, in that trend. But at, at the same time, we can see that since uh, 2000, there is a segment of fast growing companies companies uh, creating new jobs inside this ICT domain. And, and those companies are, are these, these uh, so-called uh, software and software-related service companies. And the and, and, uh, number of these companies has been grown up by 40% 40 uh, 40 in six years, and, 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 and also their headcount in these companies have, have been uh, growing steadily since 2000. So this is something that we can base on uh, when, when we think about how to develop uh, this, this our big picture further. And, and uh, what's interesting, of these firms, these fast growing firms inside ICT, 50%, half, are in Usima region, and about one third of those companies are in capital area, located here. So the basic substance, the basic clue of, of each and every company today, this, this IT-based IT talent, we have this kind of concentration, this kind of, of, of big cluster or fast-growing companies here in capital area. And, and, uh, who knows how many ICT-based uh, employees we have here in the capital area. It was in the second slide. 
Two lah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Over 50. Over 50. Approximately 50,000 50, employees. So, uh, make a wild guess how many ICT uh, based uh, employees are in the core area of Silicon Valley if we exclude San Francisco and Los Angeles? 60,000? 60, 62,000, if I remember right. So, so uh, we can deduce quite quickly here that, that, that we are not getting uh, everything out of our engine. And, and what are the reasons for that? And, and that's what we started uh, to, to uh, think about next. So, uh, according to several surveys, Finland is, is, is uh, regarding many criteria the best place in the world to, to conduct entrepreneurship. Our school system is top. Everybody knows this. this uh, PISA surveys and, and, and results from, from those. Uh, we are stable society. We have a great infrastructure. And, and, and we all know that we are also, also have, have great talent here. But still, we haven't been able to create this kind of success story based, based on this, this uh, basic substance of, of, of uh, almost any, any company today, this, this ICT and, and IT based. Talent. So is it, is it because we are lacking some of these world-class uh, skills? Or do we lack entrepreneurs that are willing to grow, setting the growth target for their, their companies and, and are wanting to go international growth? Or is it so that our innovation system currently is such that these ingredients will not get mixed enough in this system? So there are not these successful meetings with, with different type of resources and, and, and talent and resources needed. So, still, we have some huge success stories. Uh, maybe the best ones, leader ones in the domain, in the world. Everybody knows Rovia. Rovia has started to be a company of 800 uh, employees. And want, wanting to be a new Disney, yeah, it it's probably can be a new Disney. We have a supercell whose revenue in, in, in the most uh, uh, popular uh, app store, Apple's app store, uh, was bigger than, than the Electric Arts uh, with, with 1,000 games and two, uh, supercell with two games. So, so. Mm -hmm. They had a big revenue in, in the last uh, December, uh, this, this, this huge uh, leading player of game publishing in the world. And then we have these emerging uh, companies that, that, that are going to their, for example, this, this uh, deal dash, going to the most competitive markets in the area of, of, of uh, uh, e-commerce in, in the US market, and still growing rapidly. That was a company level, at the company level. Then they started to think about, about a community level. And we have also such a stories on the community level. And, and this auto SS start, startup sauna is one of those. So this, this culture where, where people work together, uh, they share everything together, and if somebody is successful, they pay back to the community is characteristics to this, this, this kind of, of uh, successful communities. We have some others. We have a uh, Casco Forum, we have Ohemisto Yritiat, and so on. But, but I think this is, this is a great example of, of, of that kind of uh, growing community, which is, is catalyzing and fostering, fostering uh, uh, the development in this domain. <coughs> so we have many encouraging examples. We have people that know how of creative world class growth companies. I just show you a few examples of those. Uh, we have communities of growth, not too many, but we already have those. And, and there's also uh, highly enough ambition setting regarding the goals. And, and we already have Finnish role models for, for these, these success stories. But we, have a, we do not have too many of those. These cases are still very rare, and, and those 
success cases uh, that, that I introduced have compensated those missing parts in our current ecosystem either by creating them by themselves or bringing them abroad to Finland, like, like capital, uh, the top talent, and, and so on. So, then we go to the P of this, how to catalyze this growth ecosystem. We think that these ingredi ingredients of growth must be brought together more effectively. And, and, and what that can be in, in practice. So if you think about uh, the current situation uh, regarding, for example, only, only these, these uh, spaces enable these, these uh, meetups and, 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 and uh, to get these, these uh, ingredients together, to get them mixed. So uh, we, we have got quite a good situation regarding the companies that, 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 uh, that are in the incubation phase during the first two years or so. Typically, the companies that are, are four to five years old, if they still are alive, they have revenues for, for financing they, they growth and their functions. But between that, we have a gap of, of, of uh, space solutions for, for these companies that are affordable. So, so, so for those companies who are not anymore in this incubation phase, but, but not, not uh, already, already uh, having enough revenues and haven't been able to get uh, external financing for their company, they are in, in, in that, that, that gap. And, 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 and uh, we thought about then that in the capital area, there would be a possibility to, to still think about creating these kind of facilities that are affordable for those companies in that gap and, 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 and as an aim, as a goal to create that kind of uh, growth community like, like, like this startup sauna is. Maybe a smaller case and starting having the right people there to, to start those, those places up, but, but that's something that we, we could build on. Then we have to follow of collaboration in doing learning and sharing mentioned. And, and what's crucial is that we have plenty of these services and, and, and these different parts needed of this growth, into the growth cluster in our ecosystem. But they are spread, spread around. And, and if, you, if you think about the, from the uh, startup's point of view, they should be centralized, available from one point of service. And yes, we have three uh, different cities in the capital area, and, and, and I, we think that, that those cities should have a common uh, vision regarding this, this uh, uh, creation of and, and catalyzing uh, this, this uh, type of, of uh, crop and innovation uh, cluster in this area. Because we already have these ingredients here, gracefully. And if we think that we would have this concentration uh, and, 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 and concentration of, of uh, fast growing companies here, that would be a solution for those two main obstacles for startup companies to grow, that were mentioned in this Pekka Alapietilas ICT 2015 report. Financing, usually from abroad, with uh, lead with know-how, and, and the second top-level talent, and that's also usually needed from abroad. <coughs> okay, uh, just give a one minute for, for, we made some project initiatives. And, and these are in, in, in Finnish. The first is this focal point. We, we got to start somewhere. And, and, and this is uh, the proposal to, to uh, find out the place where we could start in, uh, building this kind of community and, 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 and trying to, to put, uh, put those ingredients and, and to get those, those uh, 
growing companies and different type of companies, small and big ones, young and, and older ones, and, and, and talent and those right people to get together and start building that place. And it needs a space. And that space location should be chosen so that, that, that uh, new companies could be born around this focal point area. Okay, there are some, some sub, sub things, but we don't go into those. Second proposal was about a startup factory. And, and uh, this is a development organization that, that, that would serve startups in the need to create uh, prototypes and, and, and to get some uh, de development services, additional development services uh, at the very affordable level. And, and the foundation with this proposal is that we have those thousands of ICT uh, employees that have been laid off uh, from these, these major ICT companies. So is it better that those, those uh, people are, are unemployed or is it better to pay them a little bit and, 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 and start doing this, this kind of, of uh, and building this kind of concept where these, these ICT, ICT talents around would be mixed with existing startups. And the third one is, is a, it's about a, a kind of a accelerator uh, uh, concept. Actually, uh, it's, it's not a new accelerator, but it's a, it's a concept uh, where, where uh, uh, experts, uh, researchers, and people who know this business would inspect how these companies are growing and, and what, what concepts are successful and, and, and and, and to find out best, best practices and document those practices and, and, and then share these practices to the benefit of, of future pro companies. Thank you. Thank you. So then uh, I suggest that we have a discussion after Tula has had the chance to give her presentation. So let's see, is this, does this look familiar to you? Yes. Do you are? Yes. yes. Thank you. Hey, dear friends. It's always fun to be at Opaniemi and on stage and at Startup Sound and how usually I have, I have used to jump to the stage of, of uh, Design Factory. And uh, I was studying here uh, the uh, Department of Forest Programs, and I had uh, environmental technology as my major. And at the time, I think there was three of us who had environmental tech as a major, and quite many older and more wise people came to me and said that, hey, it might look a bit strange on you on your resume, and, and could harm your possibilities on the, on the labor market that you are studying environmental technology. But nowadays, so I'm happy that it's not the reality anymore. Still two years ago, I was a startup entrepreneur from Espo. And uh, I'm a co-founder of, of three Espo-born companies, Innospa, Kai Baus Finland, and, and Powerkis. And all of these companies uh, are combining uh, people, innovation, design to technology. And, and always technology comes last. So it, it should begin from the wants and needs of, of people. And, and kind of the question has always been to me like how to change a, a noun into the verb. Like Google, Google, so what people want to do with something what we have created. So, uh, for the last uh, 18 months, I have been working as a civil servant uh, for the city of Espo. And two years ago, I didn't have any idea for, for changing a job, but I, I only wanted to work as an entrepreneur. 
But when I saw this advertisement for this job in the newspaper at Kauppalehti, I felt like there's my resume on the paper and felt like that I, I really have to, have, have to do something for the country. Okay, uh, I want to share with you some of the ideas and slides which I presented two weeks ago in, in France, in Cannes, at MIPIM uh, Property Investment uh, Exhibition. And it's an exhibition for 20,000 uh, people around the globe, uh, mainly uh, property investors. And uh, we had a uh, stand there, Helsinki, Finland, and under, under this uh, Helsinki, Finland, we had not only Helsinki, but also Espoo, Turku, Tampere, uh, Turku, Tampere, Lahti, Pori. But all had a separate stand there. <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, I personally very much believe on, on Team Finland type of thinking. Where, when uh, Olivekka showed us a, a map of, of uh, Silicon Valley, none of us knew or noticed if there was uh, some borders between the cities. Between. Actually, the, the Silicon Valley is, is a combination of, of small cities like at Palo Alto, they do have 20,000 people. So my approach is Team Finland, and, and, and we just happen to have some of, of the cherries here at Espo, and I want to share these cherries with you. Yep, uh, I think it's always good to begin from, from the Finnish, Finland perspective and, and, and proudly present these facts that, that the international media has published about us. And uh, my mindset has changed within the last few years ago. I think that I, I tend to say that ah, Finland is such a long way from all the places, and it would be so much nicer and easier to live, for example, in, in Amsterdam, of course. It could be sometimes, but anyhow, not from the logistics, uh, logistical reasons. Actually, it's around or less than 10 hours to, to all uh, the major business cities in the world. From, from Helsinki Panta. And uh, this is the story that I nowadays hear quite often from the international companies also when they are considering the location for their European activities. So they find our, logistics, uh, our logistical position very interesting. And of course, Russia, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, a city of six million people is only three and a half hours here. Uh, we are part of the metropolitan area of 1.3 million people, and uh, and Espoo, Kauniainen, Vanta, uh, Vanta, and Helsinki. We are together, so-called uh, Greater Helsinki. But there's also other communities around us, and together there's 14 municipalities at the moment. Uh, the Greater 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 Helsinki area. And with this gang of 14 municipalities, we, uh, we made our common uh, competitive strategy uh, last year. And, and we very much talked about, about how we, we are able to be uh, better partners for, for small companies also. Uh, how should we change our practices for procurement, for example? And how, how uh, our metropolitan would be more easier to access, for example, more agile and, and less bureaucratic, these kind of topics we discussed. Uh, yes, it's true that Espo has no city center, but actually we have many city centers. And let's say in, in five or ten years, uh, the whole Espo will be more like one city, because there's really, really a lot of going on at the moment. And for example, Leppävaara there has now more than 60,000 inhabitants, which is in Finland already a relatively big city, actually. And our idea is, is to provide people who are working or living at Leppävaara, for example, with the municipal services on, on the walking distance. So I find this kind of, of urban planning uh, also very sustainable. So all, not all the people have to go to one point to, for, for all the services. Espoo is a great place to grow. 
And uh, nowadays we have two, uh, 257,000 inhabitants, almost 14,000 employees. And uh, here in Otaniemi, Keilaniemi, there's probably now even more, but at least 150 nationalities, which is really great. And it has changed quite rapidly within the last five, 10 years. Uh, more than 10% of, of our inhabitants uh, are speaking as a mother tongue other languages than Finnish or Swedish. Uh, for example, in, in my team, team uh, I have a colleague who moved from Germany two years ago, and other colleagues moved from uh, uh, China seven years ago, and, and, and there's still one from, from Chile. So the city of, of Espoo, we, we have uh, this policy for, for recruiting uh, immigrants, so we, we want that in our own organization we have the same percentage uh, of, of, of uh, immigrants who have, uh, came to Finland than we have in, in our population. And I think that uh, our university, you are really good at, at this. I, I have heard that uh, more than 70% of the professors who are applying to the university nowadays are from outside of Finland, which is great. So our population has grown tenfold in, in the last 50 years, and the growth will continue. 20% of our residents are under 15, which is quite remarkable in Europe and in other countries also. So maybe it tells that we are really effective and uh, and also love children here. And, and actually, I have twins myself. <laughs> and and they, they did born uh, at the same time when I finalized my studies here. 51% uh, of our residents, over 24, hold a university degree, which is also quite, uh, quite unique. Most households are double earners, and as said, uh, there's lots, lots of, of property uh, activities going on. Uh, this is the biggest infrastructure project in Finland at the moment, the West Metro, which will make your life easier in two years. And some of you maybe still study, study here, or maybe you have founded your own company and, and, and it's based here, or maybe you, you, you are inspiring students to find their own companies here. So, uh, Metro will change a lot of our opportunities here. And, and again, back to the pictures that Olivekka showed from Silicon Valley, I think this Metro line will make, uh, accomplish our dreams much easier than it is nowadays. Like, already from Tuas house, it's, it's a long way to start up sauna, especially in November. So how can we bring people together, actions together, companies together? And of course, for the companies, uh, Metro makes it possible also to, to attract people who are living at Sörnäin and to, to, to work in a company which is at Matikyla, for example. For example. And then a few words about uh, this area where we are at the moment, and, and in, in, we call this T3. Uh, and uh, the next, within the next ten years, around five billion euros will be invested in, in this area, and that's a combination of, of public and, and private money. And of course, uh, the metro is the biggest part of this investment, but there's still more than four billion other investments. Olivetta already talked about these numbers. But this picture shows one of the delicacies we have. So it's, it's, I think it's really, really something unique that it's possible to, to work in a, in a global headquarter, basically in the middle of the sea and forest. Like uh, last weekend, uh, we had Chinese uh, Chinese uh, economic media representatives visiting Finland and, and for two, three days they had visited companies and heard about Finnish, 
economy and innovation system. But on, on Saturday, uh, we visited with them uh, the Nusion National Park, and, and it was really something, something that they cannot forget for them. We were walking with the. Uh, uh, snowshoes there and made snow angels on the lake and even had had some water directly from the lake after making a hole to the ice and that's probably something what they want to share also with the Chinese uh, readers of these economic economical magazines but at the same time of course we talked about the business possibilities here around 50 percent of the turnover on Helsinki stock Exchange comes from from Espo area. Uh, this is the picture what I, which I always show when when I, I'm, I'm talking. And, and as you might notice, this is actually not from Otaniemi, but this is from Tonchi. And and this concept of of design factory is uh, basically it's it's. Uh, one of, of the first Finnish uh, education concepts that has been exported. And, and is there more than Chile, Australia, US, China nowadays? Yeah, yeah but that's a good start. As, as Peter Restepakka always says, this is a good start. <laughs> and this picture is from Oulu where I visited last week, and, and oh, from the business kitchen they have there. So the best stories are told in the kitchen, as we all know from the parties. And, and kitchen is in the central place also here, and, and has to be also in the, in the future places we are creating together. And the idea of, of the business kitchen is it's of course the space itself for the ideas and people and, and startups, but, but also it's a it's a meeting point uh, from for the uh, university for applied science and, and the university and, and uh, city people. So I think it's it's really important to forget uh, the barriers or silos between the organizations and, and just to work together. As people. I'll continue. We talked about the city like Central Park. And then a few words about data, especially open data. Uh, as, uh, as we talked, uh, Espo has grown really rapidly. And that means a uh, really fast growing need for new services also. And, and it's not only in Espo, but also in other municipalities. Of course, we are not thinking anymore that the city should provide all the services itself, but, but with, with, with the partners. A few words about Apotti. And do I have like Apotti? What is Apotti? But uh, Apotti is. Work. But anyhow, Abbott is a, it's a huge uh, ICT infrastructure project for, for healthcare. And the project was founded by uh, HUS, the uh, hospital district at Helsinki and Uusima region, and six municipalities a few years ago. And the idea was, was to create a common platform for all the healthcare information. And the project project as projects quite often uh, tend, tend, uh, tend to grow and grow and grow and get more and more complex and the budget for the project was like uh, three, uh, three, uh, uh, three, uh, 150 to 450 million euros but probably it would be even bigger and in the end it felt like the project is so massive that it, it, it would be possible only for huge corporations and, and basically uh, international corporations to, to join the bid. And at ESPO we uh, discussed a lot that it is against of, of all the ideas what we have about 
uh, creating the ecosystem of, of, of small companies, big companies, public sector together, and, and providing the services in a novel way. If, if we would have chosen this option of, of huge, massive, massive uh, platform, uh, we would have at the same time say no to the smaller companies. And that's why, that's why we, we said no to, to this uh, procurement together with, with others. And, and instead we said yes to, to a modular, modular open source based system. And I think this example tells uh, a lot about, about the mindset at Espo City and, and both on the, uh, of the, of the uh, employee side but also on, on the politicians side. Some examples of the public digital services we already have, this Vilma, uh, it, it's a good service for, for all the parents and, and school kids. Helmet, probably all of you are utilizing Helmet. And for the libraries, uh, Ilmanet is, uh, is a platform for adult education centers, and e -recruit is a recruiting uh, tool of the Expo City. And all of us probably use this journey planner uh, on the digital version. And then we have service map, uh, the Helsinki region, uh, where you can uh, you can easily access uh, information in the different cities and search for daycare locations, for example, or or others. And Helsinki Region InfoShare, uh, it's actually not, it's not anymore at the beta version, but it's up and running. And, and it's a platform with, for example, with these kind of data pools. And I would like to challenge you to innovate what you could do with this information and this data. How you could play with this information, which is openly available for you and, and for your future business. And I will finalize with a with a, a small story about unlearning, because I, I I think that that's essential for for learning and and innovative is is also also to unlearn of something else. So let's get uh, to, to Mexico City Olympic Games, uh, 1960. Uh, this, this is Dick Fosbury. He was 21 at the time when he won the gold medal at the Olympic Games on high jumping. And actually he was the first human being ever on the Olympic Games level who, who, who did see the sky while, while he was high jumping. So before his time, so that was the style. Doesn't look so nice. So his disruptive innovation was to ask this question. What if? Could it be possible to do it this way? So this elbow first and not this one. And he dreamed of the jump like this. But before he was able to jump like this, on this disruptive way, first he had to dream, then he had to unlearn on everything he knew about high jumping. Then he had to pilot and learn. And maybe the uh, fifth or, or actually already third Play uh, third line could be uh, you should confirm uh, confirm uh, the uh, the seniors around you who tell you that we have tried that one it doesn't work. So we won the gold medal with the world champion, and he said that most of the elite uh, athletes had invested so much time in their techniques technique and movements, uh, they didn't want to give it up, so they stuck with what they knew. And quite easily we could also change these 
athletes to, to municipalities or universities or big corporations or any established bodies. So, my question to you is that how can you, your company, your organization or your, or your community be part of this success story or, or maybe I should put it this way, how are we able to create this success story together? Thank you. Any questions from the audience of this one? Apart yeah. from Alpha, are you uh, is there still a plan to uh, um, try to uh, divide the uh, projects, the IC, uh, IT or ICT projects, which, which are given out mm. to smaller pieces? <coughs> yeah. Because this would be rather beneficial. Yes, for that's the very small. Yes, that's the idea. This kind of model, modular model with the smaller parts. And uh, the same idea goes with our, uh, our other procurement practices also. Instead of these massive fees, well, we want to learn to do, to purchase more wisely in the small parts. So we, we will that somehow change the channels where, whereby you approach the small companies because I guess now it's it's with these really big offers it, it might be a bit daunting for small companies even to start approaching you. So yeah. how do the a small company in the future perhaps approach you to, to become a, a part of the ESPO ICT future? Yeah that's a good question and that's what we have to work on unlearning and, and, and learning and piloting together with our partners. So we are creating new practices for this. But I think that also a good start could be to give a call to me, for example, or, or to, to our ICT director, for example. In, in ESPO, uh, our organization is, is very unbureaucratic. So, for example, for, for the mayor, you, you can call it, and, and he is probably visiting this place also more often than me nowadays. <laughs> So, so in practice, are, are, is there something going on right now that that uh, small companies could get, get involved in? Do you have uh, any concrete activities going on? You mean related to Avanti already? Well, well to any, any sort of IT related uh, yeah. service development. Uh, yes, there's a lot of going on related to digitalization of our public services. And, uh, and, and uh, I cannot now name any specific project by name, but I know that there's a lot of going on and, and we really want to be a forerunner on this in the next few years. Okay, sounds good. Any other questions from the audience? I was uh, thinking that have you thought about uh, doing a, a part of the development of this uh, software or information systems in-house or uh, is it is the only way to develop uh, public services? Do it uh, with small companies, or uh, what's kind of the ratio between getting something outside uh, versus getting something from inside? Mm. Yes, maybe something between between these approaches, but definitely uh, we are not thinking that all the best people should work for for our company. But, but, but we want to, to work in, in the same community with them. Okay, uh, I, want, I wanted to ask something from Tula. Uh, in the nature of this concept of this, this breakfast, so it is a breakfast, so uh, I gave uh, this presentation and, and the conclusions that, that, that we ended up with this our ICT plus project. Now I would like to uh, you to comment so how ESPO sees that, that you as a as a city are uh, res already responding or, or, or having plans to respond to these and and do you have a common vision regarding these recommendations uh, between Capital area cities. Yes, definitely we do. 
And even though uh, Helsingin Sanomat, by reading Helsingin Sanomat, you, you might get a bit different kind of view. We, we are working very closely together with the colleagues from the neighbor cities and, and, and really are focusing on, on these topics. And uh, I totally fully agree that we do have too many addresses, too many services uh, in too fragmented way for, for the uh, startups or one of the startups, for example, related to developing a business plan or finding a funding or whatever. And, and that's one of the action points we are working at the moment. So we really want to have this one-stop shop, uh, either virtual or a real location. And definitely we need more spaces, spaces like this. And nowadays, uh, quite often entrepreneurs contact me and ask for these spaces. And, and also those entrepreneurs uh, who are not uh, kind of uh, global tech growth company entrepreneurs, but a kind of laptop uh, service uh, service entrepreneurs, and, and they can even feel like uh, am I growth oriented entrepreneur enough to enter startup sauna, for example? So. I think that we need also different kind of places, easy to access places, and, and the, more like a common uh, living rooms than a separate offices. Uh, and the culture of collaboration in doing learning and sharing must be enhanced. And maybe related to this topic, I think that we really should focus on not only for innovation hubs, but also for pubs. So we need more restaurants, cafes, places for people to meet. And uh, that's part of my, my role also to enhance these activities. And we, I already commented on this tree. Um, yes, and the common vision. Uh, common vision, I think that whole Finland should have more inspiring common vision about what we want to be the world's best and, and also at the metropolitan area. Definitely this area is, uh, is the engine for, for Finland, Finland in, in the future. And, and we also have to choose on, on, on which uh, businesses we want to focus. Yes, and uh, the leading cluster for growth and uh, international yeah, talent. Yeah. yeah. Conclusion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I could actually identify your your vision is that this area will be the economical engine of the whole Finland mm -hmm. in the future, and uh, that's quite a big vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that we might have been found the place for this this uh, growth and innovation cluster. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.